While during workouts, our goal is often to pick the heart rate up and keep it fast, the opposite is true for when we are done, we want the heart to settle at a comfortable, slow pace. Resting heart rate matters, and luckily there are things we can do to decrease the heart's workload. Miguel Indurain, the five-time Tour de France winning cyclist, was reported to have a resting heart rate, RHR, of 28 beats per minute. To put that in perspective, sit or lay down, get comfortable, put your middle and index finger on your wrist, and measure your own resting heart rate. A lower resting heart rate is healthy. The resting heart rate for an adult typically varies between 60 and 100 beats per minute. With an average life expectancy of 75 and 85 years in most of the Western world countries, quick math reveals that the ticker should expect to be contracting anywhere between 2.3 and 4.4 billion times. Even without counting the zeros, it's plain to see that's a lot of work for one muscle. An athlete's heart, on the other hand, is bigger and stronger than the average Joe's and therefore, needs far fewer beats to do its job. Indurines of the world aside, a well-trained athlete's resting heart rate can fall as low as below 40 beats per minute. If the athlete's lifespan is the same as that of someone whose heart works 100 times a minute, the athlete's heart would only need to take on around 40% of the workload of the less trained heart. The most significant health benefit of a low RHR is a substantially decreased risk of heart disease and cardiac events, like heart attacks. The potential immediate downsides of a fast-beating heart are low energy levels, chest pain or discomfort, reduced blood circulation, the experts say, do more cardio. The good news is that there are some easy steps anyone can take to calm the heart down. One of the most effective ways is to practice relaxation, deep breathing techniques, and meditation. Many find it helpful to go for a walk in the nature or do mindful workouts. A warm shower or bath can also provide prompt assistance. Coffee lovers should take note that stimulants like caffeine can cause dehydration, which in turn makes the heart work harder to stabilize the blood flow. Also alcohol delivers toxins into the body, making the heart work harder to process and remove them. While strength training, too, makes the heart stronger, it is cardiovascular exercise which, over time, increases the heart's efficiency to regulate blood flow and distribute the oxygen which our bodies need for their systems. Studies have found that if an aerobic exercise is performed for a long time, it will affect the parasympathetic nerve, thus increasing stroke volume and lowering the resting heart rate. The evidence suggests intervals. But how high does the heart rate need to go and for how long do you need to keep it up? There is some evidence to support the superiority of interval training as a tool for permanently lowering the RHR. In practice, this means alternating intensive workouts with either easier ones or with periods of rest. Indoors this could mean plyometric exercises or a workout that mixes high cardio exercises like high knee jogging, jumping jacks, or tuck jumps with, for example, bodyweight strength training moves like push-ups or sit-ups. Wearing a heart rate monitor can be helpful and serve as an unbiased friend that tells you if you indeed are pushing yourself enough in the cardio and whether the strength moves are sufficient for dropping the beats. Interval training does not necessarily need to take place indoors. A great way to get fresh air, as well as some serious heart-healthy exercise, is to hop on a bicycle or hit the trails. If you're serious about shooting for the heart rate peaks, don't walk up the hills, sprint to the top. If you feel like you could build some more strength, try plyometric exercises to tackle hill running. If interval training just isn't your thing, good old cardio sessions on a bike, elliptical or stepper are just fine. Get situated on your cardio machine of choice, turn up the volume of your favorite workout playlist, crank up the resistance, and get going. Aim for at least 30 minutes, don't feel like you have to stop at 60, and don't be disappointed if you only make it to 15. Whatever exercise it is that you do, you are actively making your heart a whole lot happier and healthier. What's normal, average, and target heart rate during exercise? If you're wondering how to understand the effectiveness of your workout, look no further than your heart. Yes, that pounding you feel in your chest when you train can give some astounding insights. So, what exactly happens to your heart rate during exercise? And what does it tell us? Watch any medical drama on TV, and the first thing you'll see the doctor do is measure the patient's heart rate. Firstly, because yes, it means they're alive. 
secondly, because our heart rate reveals so much about our general health and fitness. For example, a weak pulse or a racing heart rate can be assigned to a medical professional that something is not right. So what exactly are they checking? By definition, your heart rate means the number of times your heart beats in a minute. The two most common ways to describe heart rate are in beats per minute, BPM, as a percentage of your maximum heart rate, MHR. By measuring your heart rate during exercise, you can help you track your fitness and monitor if you're working out at the right level for you. This means you won't be flying blind when it comes to exercise. With your heart rate, you'll know how effective your fitness session has been and how much rest and recovery you need before your next one. What can affect your heart rate during exercise? While your heart rate accurately indicates your effort and exercise intensity, it's also dependent on circumstances. There are several factors that influence heart rate during exercise, which include the following. Training background. Athletes with an extensive background in aerobic training have more efficient heart muscles. The capacity of their left ventricles has increased and the ventricular muscles have become stronger, leading to an increased stroke volume. This increased stroke volume can be observed as a lower resting heart rate as well as a lower training heart rate. Temperature. As your temperature increases, so does the need to cool your body down. This is achieved by your blood flow being directed closer to the surface of the skin. The accelerated circulation requires your heart to beat faster, which means that your heart rate goes up. When the surrounding air cools down, circulation in peripheral parts of the body decreases, so your heart has less work to do concerning circulation. This causes your heart rate to decrease. Dehydration. When you're dehydrated, the amount of plasma in your blood decreases. This forces your heart to pump faster than normal to provide enough oxygen and nutrients to muscles in peripheral parts of the body. This helps you maintain an adequate body temperature and is the reason why your heart rate tends to go up when you're dehydrated. What's a normal heart rate during exercise? When it comes to your heart rate, there is no normal. For a variety of reasons, it's pointless comparing your heart rate during exercise to someone else's. As you will discover below, there are many factors that influence our heart rate, making each of ours different and it will continue to change over the course of your life and fitness journey. What's a normal, average, heart rate by age? One of the key factors that influence our heart rate is age. Like so many parts of our body, your heart's capacity and functionality changes over the course of your life. So your age is a useful metric for estimating your maximum heart rate, MHR. By discovering your MHR, you can then work out your personal heart rate zones. These are useful for helping you to understand how different types of exercise have a specific effect on your heart and overall fitness. You can use these zones to create a heart rate training plan, which is a great way of ensuring that you are doing a variety of exercises. By regularly exercising in different heart rate zones, you will get the most out of what you put in. What's an ideal target heart rate? Your target heart rate during exercise should be between 50% to 85% of your MHR, depending on what type of exercise you are doing and for what purpose. For example, if you want to improve your endurance, you should do long training sessions at low intensity. If your aim is to improve your cardiovascular health, then high-intensity interval training is what you should try. Why train with heart rate? Your heart rate is a useful tool for understanding and improving your fitness level and performance. Training with heart rate allows you to monitor and control the intensity of your workouts, allowing for variation in your training plan. The best part of training with heart rate means that every second of your workout counts. By monitoring your heart rate during exercise, you'll enhance both your fitness and recovery time, which combined will improve your overall performance. Thanks for watching. If you like our video then hit the like button and don't forget to share and subscribe to our channel for more valuable videos to improve your life.